Okay, ladies and or germs, and by that I mean just germs. Um, we're going to discuss one of the problems on the um, acceleration uh, set. Okay, there are four problems there. Um, tomorrow we're going, or today I suppose, you guys are going to look at some smart physics -y sorts of things. Hopefully that will elucidate some of the things we're talking about now. Okay, neat. Now, um, this problem dealt with a gentleman named Juan, or maybe it's a girl, who knows, and a gentleman named Edward, or maybe it's a girl, who knows. Um, okay, and the idea is Juan is in a car in Terre Haute, and Edward is in a different town. I believe it was Richmond. Oh, give me two seconds. I don't want to be wrong. Yeah, Richmond. Um, okay, and Juan leaves at 100 kilometers per hour to the east, and uh, Edward travels west at uh, 110. And... Okay, yeah, I didn't ever, yeah, yeah, I said towards each other, so everything's fine. Okay, I was afraid I didn't tell you they were going in opposite directions. But anyway, they are going towards each other. So, here's the deal. Juan leaves just a little bit early, and Edward uh, leaves at like 12.30 or something, so that's half an hour later. So, I've written down some of the initial stuff, okay? Uh, the final position, uh, that is what I'm asking for at the very end. I'm asking at what distance from Terre Haute do we find our two gentlemen? Okay, at the same time. Now, our starting position for Juan is at zero. We're calling Terre Haute our zero for the sake of argument. Um, we need to find, so I mean, we have to have a sort of a, a starting point, right? So let's make it Terre Haute, why not? Um, now, <clears throat> Richmond is 238 kilometers away, or so it says in the problem. So, uh, 238 kilometers is where Edward begins, his X initial. Now, V final for both, okay? Now, here's the thing. Um, we never talked about acceleration in this problem. Therefore, we must assume that the acceleration is zero because what kind of a problem would this be if you did not know the acceleration or expected to um, infer it somehow? That's illegal. They're not falling, so there's no acceleration due to gravity. That would be an amazing trip of 238 kilometers of falling. That'd be great. Um, now, here comes the, the part that makes this problem interesting, okay? And that is the time. Okay, this is the physics of the problem. This is the crazy part of the problem, okay? How would you describe these two different guys, okay? You've got a couple options. Either you take Juan's time and subtract some of it to talk about Edward, or you take Edward's time and add a little bit to talk about Juan's time. Personally, I'm in the um, take what Edward's done and add a little bit of extra uh, in that sort of mind frame. So let's think about this. If Edward leaves at 12.30, okay, we'll call his time T-Ed, or Tedward. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Um, anyway, time, Ed. Okay, Ted talks. This is the time that Ed spins on the road until he reaches his final destination. Starring no one in particular, those movies are horrible. Now, um, time, Ed, um, if the people from Final Destination are watching this video, no way. All right, now, the time that Ed is on the road until he gets to X final. We do not know this number, okay? So we have to call it a variable. We have no idea. Um, now, Juan has been traveling for Ted, right? He's been traveling for the same amount of time. But, but, he's also been traveling for an extra half an hour. So we can call that 0.5 because I'm assuming we're measuring stuff in kilometers and hours, okay? So 0.5 hours, an extra 0.5 hours. Okay, once we do all the math, the, the um, equation, like the, what do you call it? The units all work out, okay? So let's make this make sense, okay? Make sure. Ed travels for a certain amount of time till he reaches the same position as Juan, okay? Juan travels for a certain amount of time until he reaches the same position as Edward. Okay, we could either call that a new variable, T Juan or T Juana. That, oh my gosh, everything's great today. Or we could call it Ted, which is the time Ed was traveling plus a half an hour. This makes sense in my head. And I believe it probably does in yours as well. Because their, their time is just off by a half an hour because Juan left a little early. Okay, so his position is described by a little extra time. Now, the concept behind this then is how can we find our X final, and then, uh, you know, get rid of some stuff. Okay, so there's there's a couple ways about this. I think that the most reasonable way is to solve for Ted in one equation, 
and shove that in where Ted belongs in the other. Okay, now this is going to get a tad messy. Doesn't mean that it's impossible, just a little messy. Um, algebra can be a little bit uh, mean at times. Um, so let's make sure that all of our numbers are correct. Okay, so zero, cool. 100 kilometers per hour. We said Juan, this is Juan, this is Ed, is going to the right. He's going to the east. Okay, so we're going to call that a positive number. Uh, time has no direction. Uh, this is a position. It is that far away. That's good. That's positive. Uh, Edward, however, is going negative. He's going in the opposite direction. So he's going in a negative direction. He's going west. So if we were on a little, <clears throat> a little graph here, right, he's traveling towards the negative x direction. He's traveling towards the positive x direction, right? So that's why we say positive 100, negative 110. So let's make sure we keep that tr in our minds for the calculation. Watch this, watch this. Are you ready for this? <laughs> oh, that didn't work out very well. Okay, so that means we can write some equations, okay? Uh, we look at the big three, and the only one that deals with the stuff that we have looks like this. <clears throat> X initial plus V naught times time. Now, I actually did write this at one point or another, um, but let's write out the one that is the closest in the big three, okay? This guy, do we have any acceleration? Our acceleration was zero in both cases. So what we can do is we can rewrite this equation to look like this. X, F equals X initial plus whoever it is, their initial speed times time. So now let's create this equation for both individuals. Okay, this will be one on the left and this will be Eddie on the right. This is like Twilight, right? Twilight, wasn't his name Edward? Probably. Okay, X final. We do not know this number for one. We know that it will be the same as Ed's, but we do not know that number. Equals X initial. What is X initial? It is zero for one. Okay? Plus V initial for one was 100, positive 100 kilometers per hour. And our time was kind of confusing, but not too terribly confusing. Ted plus one half of an hour. Okay, so this is the equation that defines Juan's motion. How far he is from zero is defined by his speed times the amount of time that has passed. Now, um, it is up to you if you want to distribute now or later. I think it would probably make sense to do it now just for the sake of um, this problem. Who knows if this will help us or not? We'll see. Uh, 100 times 0 0.5, mental math, 50 kilometers. Okay, now if you look at this unit, kilometers per hour times hours, hours will cancel, that'll just be kilometers. Should make sense, X is in uh, kilometers there. Okay, now for Eddie, XF is equal to, um, we have our initial position, 238 kilometers. Oh boy, I ran out of room. Plus, let's see if I can do it without running out of room. Oh gosh, uh, yeah, sure, no, yeah, we'll do minus, okay? Because our initial velocity for eddy is negative 110. So we'll say negative 110 uh, kilometers per hour. Oh, did I run out of room? Oh gosh, did I run out of room? Oh gosh, oh no, oh no! Oh, okay, we're fine. Uh, times Ted, the time that Edward was traveling. Um, I don't believe we need anything else. Uh, let me verify that. Looks good. So now, in the end, we're looking for this, right? So we need to get rid of all other variables. The only variable that we have is this gentleman, Ted. So what we need to do is either solve for Ted over here or solve for Ted over here. Um, looking at the problems, they are equally as silly, okay? So um, it doesn't matter which. We will choose the one on the... Oh, golly, let's do the one on the right. Why not? It doesn't matter at all. So what we're going to do is try to get Ted by itself. Algebra some crap around. I'm going to add this term to the other side, subtract that term to this side. Okay, do that all in one step. You guys should be able to follow. Kilometers per hour times Ted. I'm going to get rid of my parentheses because I don't really need them. Equals 238 kilometers minus XF. Once again, remember what we're doing here. Add, subtract. Okay, then to get Ted all by, it's lonesome. I keep doing that. Kilometers per hour. 
Okay, that cancels it on this side. Divide by 110, gosh dang, I'm gonna make it 111 kilometers per hour on this side. Okay, okay. So Ted, we make Ted equal to. Um, now it is once again up to you how you wanna do this. Uh, I would suggest for the sake of our sanity, why don't we separate those terms, okay? So it's 238 over 110 and minus XF over 110. I know that once again, it's it's all relative. I don't, I don't know, man, it's up to you. I think it makes more sense just to do it now. Okay, so 238 by 110 is, uh, that looks like a reasonable result, 2.16 hours, if you guys can follow the math there. Minus, and then it's just XF over 110 kilometers per hour. Okay, so there's Ted. Ted written in terms of hours. Here's a certain amount of time, 2.16. As you can see on my little calculator, I'll round it to the nearest hundredth because I don't, it doesn't really matter. Um, minus this guy right here. Now, what we can do is we can take this whole, oh, I went out of frame. Take this whole term and put it right there. Now you might be saying, that's gross. You're right, but that's not, it's not terrible, okay? It's reasonable. XF minus, get out of here. Hey, Matt, Matt, look, look, look right there. Matt, look. Cats, okay. Anyway, XF equals 100 kilometers per hour times this whole nonsense right here, 2.16 hours minus XF over 110 kilometers per hour. Okay, Ted is now gone. By Ted, 50 kilometers. Whoo doggy! All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna distribute this 100 into both terms. That will make this slightly more disgusting. I'm gonna prep another piece of paper because we know it's coming, baby. Um, here we go. We're going to multiply it in. So 2.16 times 100. I hope you can all do that in your head. XF equals 216 units, kilometers, hours, hours, hours cancel. So it'll be kilometers minus, here comes a fun one, 100 kilometers. Why did I start my calculator if I wasn't going to use it um, per hour? And that's going to be on top, right? That's on top. And then here's this on bottom over 110 kilometers per hour. A classic way to write any sort of thing. XF, okay, we've distributed that, distributed that, and then plus 50 kilometers. Neat. I want you guys to do that inside your brain. Good luck. Okay, 100 divided by 110 is, <laughs> I like that number, it's a good number. I'm gonna rewrite this, okay? Oh, look at all these papers. Man, what a professional, this guy. Okay, XF equals 216 kilometers. Uh, minus 0 0.91, okay, once again, just kind of rounding to the hundredths, um, times XF. Wow, really? Anyway, um, plus 50. Yeah, it's reasonable. Okay, so now for the fun part, plus, get our XFs together, 0.91 XF. Oh, this is kilometers, my bad. Um, plus 0 0.91 XF. 1XF plus 0.91XF is, you guessed it, 0.91XF. Now this probably does have a unit, my guess is it is, no it doesn't, I'm sorry. It canceled in that last one, if you look right here. <clears throat> sorry, let's come back here. Kilometers per hour over kilometers per hour, that's the same unit, cancels. <clears throat> okay, that makes sense. Um, it shouldn't have a unit. 216KM plus 50. I uh, wrote that pointlessly. You can do that in your head also. 1.91XF equals 266. Oh gosh, the mark of the devil. Uh, half of it, or two thirds. Two thirds is the mark of the devil, holy cow. It's like everything is devil. Everything is devil, guys. Okay, anyway. So now we are going to divide by 1.91 on both sides, 1.91. Uh, you can see it's almost two, and that kind of makes sense. 266, is that the total distance between the two like places? We're pretty close, no, 238. Okay, anyway, XF, 266 divided by 1.91. Here we are, 266 divided by 
1.91, and that gives us 139.2, and that would be 7. See? 27 kilometers. Okay, 139.27 kilometers. So this is the position at which the two gentlemen meet. Now let's kind of make sense of this number. Is this closer to Juan or is this closer to Edward? Well, that's a good question. 238 by 2 is 119. So it looks like it happened a little past the center point. And if you think about it, that should make sense. Juan was going a little faster. Oh, sorry, a little slower, but for a longer period of time. So he should have passed that center point before Edward did. Okay. Um, now, you can uh, verify this using graphing, of course, um, because graphing is far more powerful than I ever thought possible. Uh, so if you want, you can verify this with graphing. This has been a very long video. Watch it at two times speed. You get that, <laughs> you get that command at the end of the video. Anyway, um, I will write it in the description. Watch it two times speed because this, this kind of shows you the process. Um, if you have questions, say it on the internet, please. Um, ignore the devil. He's, he's a bad guy from what I heard. Um, anyway. Um, yeah. I'll see you soon, won't I? Yeah, real soon. Super soon.